I think the challenge for a lot of us is that we have learned a lot of stuff. Uh, we've read a lot of books, we have all this information, all this knowledge. And yet at the same time, all that information and all that knowledge is no longer locked away in the brains of experts or in very nice libraries. Anybody can look up this information. They can Google it, they can go to Wikipedia, they can find online articles, it's all there. So if that content can be found elsewhere, what is it that teachers do? I think what I'm doing when I'm teaching is that it's, it's, it is talking about the stuff that we know. It's about content. It's what does Luke say? What's in that text? What's an heiress verb? But more importantly, it's about developing a, a sense of wisdom that can discern good information from bad information, that can discern wisdom from foolishness. We're not all going to use, say, Greek in the same way in the work of ministry. We're not all going to read scripture the same way. But can you be reflective on the way there? And when you get wherever there is, can you now turn and say, where is God asking me to go next? Uh, and to have the wisdom to follow those. Part of our job as teachers is not to fill our, the brains of our students with lots of data, but to fill their brains or to uh, kind of, to help them embody what it means to be a wise, discerning leader was always learning new stuff because the world is always changing. So that I'm not preparing them for today so much with what we know today, but hopefully giving them enough information and the wisdom to ask the right questions for 10 years from now. Practices of teaching that are really important. There are um, certain values and commitments that we embody. So there is a sense of doing, right? It's an activity, it's an action. Uh, but I'm intrigued by the possibility that it's also a way of being, that it's not my, my teaching is not boiled down to the techniques I use, the technology I use in an online classroom. What teaching really boils down to is the kind of person that I've been formed to be and the kind of people that I'm hoping to form and shape, or more clearly, the kind of people that I hope to walk alongside as they find themselves being formed and shaped by God, by their neighbors, by scripture, by their classmates, and by the world around them. So I, I, on the one hand, um, I, I, I want to see, I want students to see me and for me to see students that, that we're all co-learners co in the classroom. Uh, that I'm not the, um, I'm not the expert in the room who's going to dump information into their brains. That I know some stuff that I hope that they'll learn. But that more importantly what we do is that we, we ask really interesting questions, we ask critical questions, and that we together discern not just the answers, but how do you get to those answers. So on the one hand, I want to see myself as a co-learner with my students. Uh, on the other hand, I think there's a reality also in which, which we have to remember as teachers is that we carry a lot of authority into that classroom. I get to determine the syllabus. I get to determine the outcomes. I get to determine the textbooks. I get to determine how we're, I'm going to assess their learning. And I get to give them grades at the end of the semester and say whether the work is adequate or inadequate. And that's a whole lot of power for me to, to have as I'm, uh, as I'm imagining myself as a co-learner co with them. So I think that tension between the authority that we wield as both experts and teachers and the, the acknowledgement that our pedagogies are ones that we're trying to learn together and that my students will teach me. They teach me all the time. Um, that, that tension is where I find myself often. And I'm not sure that's fully resolved. I'm not sure it will ever be fully resolved for me. That may just be an inherent part of, of being a teacher today. Um, I don't know if I always had the tools to say what made for good teaching and bad teaching. I think I'm developing those. Um, I wonder if good teaching and bad teaching has less to do with the techniques we talked about earlier and less to do with um, are we using the right technologies or lecture versus, I, I'm not sure it's really the techniques. I wonder if it's about deeply about values and how we as teachers view ourselves and how we view our students. So I don't have to be this great lecturer to be a great teacher. I don't necessarily have to lead a great seminar to be a great teacher. I wonder what it means to be a great teacher is to recognize what you bring to the classroom and also recognize what the students bring that you don't have. It's about students recognizing that they bring something to the classroom, but there's always something that they're missing too that you can help provide or the books can help provide or the conversation can help provide. So maybe good teaching is about realizing how interwoven we are, both teacher and student, uh, both students and the subject that we're engaging, that those two are all, those are all bound up together. And maybe that, that's the essence of good teaching. 
Um, and bad teaching is the disconnect, where teachers and students don't understand their roles as co-learners, but one understands them as pure authority and the other as, as pure recipient of that authority. To me, that, that's what characterizes bad teaching.